I recently got access to this really comprehensive study on GPT and GPT usage. This analyzed over 330,000 GPTs, and there's a list of them available too that I'll share with you. All these are part of this one batch set of data that I could share with you. And this developer that sent it to me, Andre, was very kind to put together this dashboard and made it available for anyone. So I'll go ahead and link this below as well. But let me kind of show you exactly how I plan to use this set of data. So this dashboard here, right here, shows you the top 1000 GPT by conversation. So this basically is by popularity, right? How many times has a conversation take place inside of a specific GPT? So image creator here, this Dolly category GPT has 3 million conversations, 82,000 reviews, and the rating of 3.6, okay? But as you see over here, all the different filters are available. Let me just go to chat GPT, GPT store for a second. If you look inside the GPT store, basically what's happening is within each category of GPT, like this Dolly category, you only have access to the 12 GPTs they show you based on usage, typically based on usage. And that's really all you have, right? So if you're trying to build a GPT, they're in the process of rolling out monetization. They already have selected a handful of people that they're testing this with. So soon we are going to get to monetize our GPTs here that are public inside of the GPT store. But I still can't figure out what GPTs I should build, what GPTs are going to be popular. So let me show you how to use this data. So with this data, I'm writing a GPT right now that's almost done. I've been really fine tuning it. It's in the writing category. So if I go to the writing category in this dashboard, it's not only going to show me the top 12 GPTs by usage, but it's going to show me the top 1000 GPTs in this category. Again, analyzed from that whole set of 300,000 GPTs, 4 million, 4.4 million conversations, right? In this category. Now, currently I'm building a GPT to basically take AI created content and make it more human. So it looks like a lot of people had that same idea. So Humanizer Pro, for example, is one of those ideas. There's another one. There are things for SEO and for copywriting here that are ranking in the top 10. And as you go through this, there's translations, there's sales copy kind of writing tools here, a lot of SEO tools, income tools. So really useful just to see based on these top, let's say 100 GPTs, what are the most useful? What are the most popular? Look at the ratings. See there, look at this one. This is 4.9, right? This is a essay tool. So maybe I could see what this is. So all I have to do is type in the word. This is essay writing tool. So here I could then take this for a test, see some of the story conversation and kind of get inspired on some of the things that I could learn from this GPT to use in mine. Mine is not for essay writing. Mine is just going to be for general copywriting, but to make it a lot more human. Now, you could also go to the all category if you're not sure what category you want to make a GPT in and kind of look at these top 100 or so in every category. So this is going to show you the different categories that you could build GPTs in. A lot of these have over a million usage already, million conversations and a lot of reviews. Some are reaching almost 100,000 reviews already. And I'll also give you a link to this page because what Andre did here with this set of data is he made it available here just on GitHub. If you're a developer or if you want to build custom GPTs and extract some set of data from here, he's made this option available for us, which this is kind of a big, large file. My Excel sheet actually had a hard time opening this document. But this is basically like this document I opened here that was from that GitHub repository. This has, I don't know, 16, 17,000 different GPTs that I could go ahead and sort. Again, this is inside of Excel, so I could sort anything by conversation, by review, by usage, right? It's all available here. All the data, the last update, extremely comprehensive. I was customizing my own GPTs with it. So for example, I have this GPT that I just recently updated, and this is a GPT finder by Skilllip AI. So this one, I keep updating with the best GPTs I find rather than giving you the 300,000 GPTs or 30,000 GPTs. I just hand select around a couple of hundred. I think there's like 300 GPTs right now in the data set that I used to train this GPT. So this is a GPT. I'll include this below too. This makes it a little bit easier to just find the best GPTs rather than a massive repository. And they're kind of hand selected by me on this list. But the real reason I wanted to show you this dashboard, I wanted to share with you that set of data is 
while you're building your GPTs, go through here and see what's working and what's not working. Look at the number of reviews and the stars and look at the number of conversation and search based on category. If you have an idea for one, see if it has any chance based on what's already working in the store. See if you could improve it. See if you could combine multiple GPTs and get ahead of it before they roll out monetization into the GPT store. So I want to thank Andre for sending this to me. If you have any resources like this that my subscribers could benefit from, you could email me. The email is in the about section of this YouTube channel, and I'll make sure to include it in upcoming videos if it's useful. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.